Hello and welcome back to the Critic Cucullus. Today we are in Mountain Blade Warband. We are on the console edition, so we are playing native. That means no mods whatsoever. This is just the base version. This game has been out for a very, very long time, but as I've said in previous videos, I want to cover it a little bit and explore uh, how the audience like it or don't like it. Uh, in today's episode, we are looking to do a character build and looking around these stats uh, but hidden behind the options you get right at the beginning of the game. Um, you may not know this, but the basic things you are picking uh, are affecting the stats that your character is actually starting with. And if you're new to the channel and want to see more content just like this, or fancy uh, watching one of the many, many reviews I make, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and of course, like this video if you're enjoying it. Now, the first option you're going to have in the game is to choose uh, your gender, who you actually want to play as. Do you want to play as a male or a female? Now, the game does warn you at the beginning that it's going to be a little bit harder for your playthrough if you choose to play through as a female at the beginning of the game. If you've never played the game before, I would strongly recommend starting off as a male because there's a few things in this game that you're going to have to learn to understand before you take that female role. So, you know, if you want to have some tips on playing a female character at the beginning of the game, let me know down below and I can do a video uh, all about that. But for the sake of this video, we are going to pick male. Now, after we pick our gender, we are then asked another question about our father. And we are confronted with six different options. And these six different options uh, will change your base stats. For instance, my pick is a noble. And if you pick noble, you will get one to intelligence, one to charisma. That's at a base. You'll also get an extra one point, depending if you pick male or female. You will get one to riding, one to leadership. You also get one to power strike and to weapon master and tactics if you picked a male. And you also get a couple of points for one handed weapons, two handed weapons, and pole arms. Interesting to note, you're also awarded 50 renown um, and 100 dinars at the beginning of the game. If you pick a merchant, you'll get a plus two to intelligence and one charisma. You'll get one riding, one to infantry management, one to leadership and two to trade. You will also get extra dinars at 250 and a 20 renown bonus. If you pick Warrior, you'll get one to Strength, one to Agility, one to Charisma, uh, one to Iron Flesh, one to Power Strike, one to Weapons Master, one to Trainer, which could be very important. I do love the Trainer perk, and one to Leadership. You'll also get an improved Kite Shield at the beginning of the game. If you pick Hunter, you've got one Strength, two Agility, one Power Draw, one Athletics, one Tracking, one Pathfinder, one Spotting, and only 30 dinars. If you pick Nomad, you'll get one Strength, one Agility, one Intelligence, two to Riding, which could be very interesting, uh, one Pathfinding, and you'll only get 15 dinars, 10 Renown, but you will get a Battered Plane Cavalry Shield. And lastly, if you pick Thief, you'll get three to Agility, one Power Throw, two to Athletics, one to Looting, one to Inventory Management, and you'll also get some Throwing Knives. You have to forgive me for throwing so much information at you guys, but there's a lot to go through, so I kind of want to give it to you as quickly as possible. Next up, you are asked about your early life. And if you pick a page, you will get one to strength, one to charisma, one to power strike, and one to persuasion. You also get weapon proficiencies up in one-handed weapons and pole arms. If you pick apprentice, you'll get one to strength, one to intelligence, one to engineering, and one to trade. If you pick Assistant, you'll get one to Intelligence, one to Charisma, one to Infantry Management, and one to Trade. If you pick Urchin, you'll get one to Intelligence and one to Agility. you also get one to Looting and one to Spotting, and you'll get some proficiencies in one-handed weapons and Throwing. 
And lastly, if you pick Steep Child, you'll get one to Strength, one to Agility, one to Power Throw, one to Horse Archery. You'll also get 24 points to Archery, 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 and you'll get five plus on your Renown. Next up, it's going to ask about your, your life, where you are right now in your adult life. If you pick a squire, you're going to get one to strength, one to agility, one to power strike, weapons master, riding, and leadership. You'll also get proficiencies in one-handed, two-handed weapons, pole arms, archery, crossbows, and throwing, and you will get your basic equipment. So as a squire, you will get a ragged leather jerking, a tattered leather boots, a suede back a saddle for your horse, a rusty sword, hunting crossbow, bolts, some smoked fish, and some dinars. This option, however, only gives you 20 extra dinars. Option number two gives you two to charisma, one to weapon master, one to pathfinding, one to persuasion and leadership. You also get a proficiency plus 19 in one-handed weapons and 16 to crossbows. And here you will get a sturdy turbard, uh, a jagged leather boots, suede back saddle, rusty sword, hunting crossbow, bolts, smoked fish and 80 dinars. The student option will give you two to intelligence, one to weapon master, wound treatment, surgery, and persuasion, 15 to one-handed weapons, and 32 to crossbow. You'll also get a sturdy tunic, woolen hose, a suede back horse, one rusty sword, hunting crossbow, bolts, smoked fish, a random book, which could be worth a lot of money. The books in this game do cost an awful lot of money, so this could be very handy, and you get 80 dinars as well. A peddler will give you one plus two intelligence and charisma, riding, pathfinding, infantry management and trade, and 11 to pole arms. You get for infantry a fur hat, leather jacket, leather boots, leather gloves, um, and two horses. So you're going to have one to pick through here. You get a staff, a crossbow, bolts, smoked fish, linen, pottery, and two wool, plus 90 dinars. It's actually a pretty cool little haul there because you can sell that stuff for an extra bit of money. If you pick a smith, you get one strength, one intelligence, one to master weapons, tactics, engineer trade, 11 to one-handed weapons. You get a tunic with a vest, ragged leather boots, a horse, a balanced, a balanced sword, actually the best sword so far, a hunting crossbow, bolts, smoked fish, tools, and a hundred dinars. And lastly, if you pick a poacher, you'll get one strength, one intelligence, power draw, athletics, tracking, spotting, uh, seven to pole arms, 57 to archery, which is just massive. And infantry wise, you'll get raw hide coat, hide boots, um, a heavy horse, chipped axe, hunting bow, barb arrows, two dried meat, two furs, and only 10 dinars. And now you have to give your reason for adventuring. If you pick revenge, you will get two to strength and one to power strike. If you pick loss, you will get two to charisma, one to iron flesh. If you pick wanderlust, you will get two to agility, one to pathfinding. If you pick forced out, you'll get one to strength, one intelligence, and one weapon master. And if you pick money, you'll get one intelligence, one agility, and one to looting. Next up, you're asked to pick your banner. And so why not? I'm going to pick the, the, the little purple unicorn. And then after that, you can finally assign your extra points. Now, I have got four, four attribute points that I can put on my attributes, five skill points, and then I've got 10 weapon points. Now, your build may be a little bit different depending on what you've done, but with the build that I've currently got, I am th three on riding, and I want to get that to four as quickly as possible, and that's why I'm going to put four points into agility. 
Now here, it really is worth noting that along your journey, you will recruit companions. You get to level up your companions as you level up yourself. Meaning, if you want an absolutely amazing surgeon, uh, you can actually make that through your companions. If you want someone that's going to cut down that siege time, then you can put all your points into engineer with a companion. The best bet really for you is to concentrate on being an absolute beast of a warrior. However, that being said, putting points into first aid for the beginning of the game isn't a bad option. Having a point into prisoner management isn't a bad option because that way you can capture lords and ransom them off and do the same with kings if you want to. For me, an absolute must-have is trainer. Uh, having trainer allows you to train your troops when you're resting on your journeys and it means when you recruit recruits, you can very quickly train them up into hardened warriors. The better that stat the absolute better for your game. Luckily, this game actually does a very good job of telling you exactly what each point into each stat actually does. So if I was you, I'd have a good old read up and see what works best for you and your playstyle because your playstyle may not be the same as others' playstyles. So when they give you tips on how to build your character, it just might not work for you. Personally, I like to have a good bit of a tank and have a few good abilities as well. Getting your health up to at least 50, 51 is gonna be very, very beneficial. So try and get Ironhide up to that and then getting Power Strike. I'm already at four because of the build that I've had, but having a good Power Strike is also a very good idea. And as I mentioned before, I want to get my riding up to at least four points because at four points, I get access to the better uh, horses in the game, the more armored horses in the game, meaning that I can become an absolute beast on the battlefield. But there we go, guys. That is the end of this video. I hope it's not too much information for you. This game is incredibly complicated for what it is and how old it is. Um, and I hope that I've given you the best bit of advice that I can. After this, you get to create your character, um, which is a bit of a doddle. Do whatever you want. I've gone for a bit of a randomized, but then you pick your starting location in the game. And if I might, I would recommend Swandia just because they have the best starting units is a good place to kind of train up your initial units. And of course, eventually, those units will become Swandian Knights, which is the best land troops in the game. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, drop us a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you've got any tips, don't forget to comment them down below as well. And if you want to see more Warband content, don't forget to comment down below. Because if you guys don't like it, I'm not going to keep making it. Until next time, I've been a monk, we've been a critical and I'll see you in the next video.